Dear Evan Hansen. Not too bad, bro. I don't know what everyone else is talking about. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, it's me, Grant the Movie and TV Guy. Hello. Um, that was a stupid opening. I probably will read that. Um, before we begin, a uh, disclaimer. In order to talk about this film in any, even enough detail to review it, um, requires me to talk about things that are potentially triggering involving mental health, um, as well as suicide and social anxiety. Um, I want you all to know before I begin, I love all of you. I know I'm hyperbolic and can get a little silly and maybe get a little angry. Some people in movies or abroad, but I need you all to know you're loved. And uh, there's always another way. And uh, uh, if you need help, um, you're not alone. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Um, along with being actively available, it will also be in the description of this video if you need it, as well as on my letterbox review um, if you also need it. Um, that being said, uh, again, I'm Grand Living TV Guy. Hello. Um, and. Um, Movies and TV is what we do here, and today we are talking about uh, the only big movie, certainly at my theater this weekend, because uh, we didn't get Eyes of Tammy Faye or The Card Counter, but we have Dear Evan Hansen, um, and this movie is adapted from uh, the monsterly popular uh, Broadway show, and it is directed by uh, Stephen Chbosky. Now, if you don't know who Stephen Chbosky is, um, he did two of my favorite movies of the 2010s, uh, which was previous two films, which were... Um, one of which was based on his own book, um, which was The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Both the book and the film I loved. I think it's one of the best coming-of-age films ever made. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful film. Um, and then he also made um, a monsterly... Uh, monster... Ugh, talk right, Grant. A uh, hugely um, pleasant surprise in the movie Wonder. Um, about uh, five years ago? Four years ago? Um, which was um, a coming of age story of a different sect, in this case, um, the elementary and middle school section, with little bits for the high school characters. Um, which also took subject matter that could be potentially um, difficult to do on film, and did it on film, and did it quite beautifully and touchingly. Uh, this man's a sentimentalist, undeniably, and that makes him weirdly a perfect choice for Dear Evan Hansen. So what's the film about? Well, Ben Platt stars, um, and in fact he's reprising his role from the stage as Evan Hansen, and... Uh, uh, this is a little bit, the plot's a little complex, so, so bear with me. Um, he is a high school student, suffering from, uh, so, like, along with potential other diagnoses that are never really given, it, at the very least, severe anxiety disorders. As someone who also has an anxiety problem, I can relate. Um, he does, especially in, when I was a teenager, he barely speaks to anyone. He doesn't really, um, he sits alone at lunch, really. Um, his only friend jokingly says we're only family friends, uh, played by Nick Dodani, who is always a delight. He was also terrific on Atypical. Um, and uh, he is often bullied by Connor Murphy, who is this uh, young gentleman played by Colton Ryan, who is quite good in his very brief role in the film, um, brief for a very tragic reason. He's also in love with Con um, uh, Connor Murphy's uh, sister, uh, Zoe, played by uh, Caitlin Dever, who is always good, including here, um, of Booksmart and Detroit fame, as well as Last Man Standing. She's uh, always wonderful to see. Um, and uh, his therapist has encouraged him after an incident um, that we learn later is more than it seems, involving um, a broken arm caused by falling out of a high tree. And then Hanson, still based therapist, to write letters to himself, starting with Dear Evan Hansen, uh, as basically as a way to cope with his um, anxiety. Um, that one particular letter that includes uh, motivation to talk to Zoe Murphy ends up in the hands of Connor, who is already um, has severe uh, mental issues, um, and goes home and does not appear in school for a couple of days. Uh, Evan Hansen is called to the principal's office, but um, as a sister of goodwill, he signs. His name on his cast with a very uh, dark uh, thought of, now we both can pretend we have friends. It's not good to hear. Um, and sure enough, that's prophetic. Uh, Amy Adams plays the mother. I don't know who plays the stepfather. He's also quite good in the film. Um, they both are great. Come into the prince's office and tell him, Evan Hansen, dear Evan Hansen, uh, we found this on our son. He wrote it to you. Um, and it was his, um, they believe, his suicide note uh, the night before 
uh, he t- uh, took his own life. And essentially, um, with the, the, the name on the cast as further motivation for the parents, Evan does not have the heart to tell these grieving people that um, he didn't really know their son. In fact, he was often um, targeted by their son for um, negative behavior. And essentially, um, it just keeps ballooning. Basically, Evan Hansen um, leading to um, a moment where he finally uh, delivers an anthem. Uh, he says on Connor's behalf that it goes viral uh, for uh, mental health awareness. And soon the lie becomes uh, worldwide and too big to ignore. And Evan Hansen is forced to face um, these people who he's now bonded with, telling them the, t- uh, the hard truth that he didn't know Connor and that um, all of this was a lie. Whew, that's a lot. Um, I am, before we get into anything else, I'm going to say this. I love Dear Evan Hansen. I love the musical, and I love the film, and I'm going to tell you why. There's been, this movie has not gotten good reviews. Not in the slightest. Not at all. Uh, It's pretty much been panned by most audiences. It's at a 31%, which roughly is the same score as He's All That. Come on, guys. Even if... I'm not saying that this is going to be for everyone, but it's better than He's All That. Like, come on. And I think that the biggest hurdle for people, um, even when the musical was on stage, is that Evan Hansen does a pretty horrible thing to this, uh, the Murphys. And you have to kind of... And it's not played for, like, dark humor or satire, like World's Greatest Dad or something. It's, like, it's traumatic. Um, it's played for dramatic reasons. Here's the thing, though. And this is something I think they improved upon it. Without giving too much away, the way the movie ends is better than the musical. Because it actually deals with the real-world reality of what gaslighting can do. And just because on an emotional level you do care about Evan Hansen does not mean what he did was not wrong. And that what he did was good by any means. The music in this is phenomenal. Uh, Ben Platt is phenomenal. In fact, I think that this movie wouldn't have worked nearly as well. I'm going to be that guy. Uh, This movie would not work nearly as well without Ben Platt. Now, there's been some controversy over Platt's involvement. Um, He played the role on stage. His father, Mark Platt, is the producer on the film. Um, There's been accusations of nepotism. There's been accusations uh, that he's too old for the part. Here's the thing. I'm going to get this out of the way. Uh, The wig they put him in is atrocious. It's not good. Um... It took me all of five minutes, though, to get over that. Uh, Because here's the thing. Nobody in this movie is an actual teenager. (laughs) Nobody. Colton Ryan, uh, Caitlin Dever, Amanda Stenberg, who also has a really wonderful song herself and a really great supporting role in this, as sort of like the uh, equally anxious but slightly more outgoing friend to Evan. The thing is, is that all these kids... I think the youngest is Amanda Stenberg, and even she's over 20. Like... High school movies never have actual kids who are high school age in them. They just don't. And I think the main reason is, with all due respect to child actors, they're not going to do this as well as people who have been out of high school and understand the themes of this story. I think that you need a Ben Platt for this. I think that it it makes it... He has enough distance from the age of the character to do it better, I think, than anyone else could. And the experience of doing it on stage. He feels it. And he's great. Julianne Moore who I forgot to mention also, it's a wonderful cast, uh, who plays his mother, is amazing in this. Uh, she has a really beautiful song um, that hit close to home for me, personally, relating to my own upbringing. Um, and I just thought this was a really good adaptation of this musical that actually improved on things in the musical. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I really do... I really love Dear Evan Hansen. I can't, I can't go all the way with it. To quote another musical, Hairspray, I can't go all the way, but I can go pretty far. I'm going to give Dear Evan Hansen four and a half out of five stars. I honestly would not be surprised if this made my best of list, and I did go in with hesitation. Because this is a hard musical to adapt to screen. It is a very ill-advised story, but I think that that is the way in for people. I think that if you... You have to go in knowing that you're going to have to take a little bit of a leap of faith with the premise. It is a difficult premise. It, it, like, it is inherently... But I think this movie actually proves on it by not necessarily letting him get everything he wants in the end. Actually giving him, showing him some of the real implications of who he hurt. And what that's going to have an effect on him while still making it. And I think they do a good job also showing that Evan is in kind of an, after a while, in an impossible situation. Now he takes it too far. Absolutely he does. But there is a moment, especially around the midpoint, when he's talking to the sister and they're having their mind like, just tell her, dude. This is like, yeah, you do get to that point. 
it has what, a little bit of what Roger Ebert called the idiot plot, where the whole movie resolved just if one person would say one line of dialogue that ended it. But the thing is, it works. The music is good. It's written by the same team that did La La Land and The Greatest Showman. They had clearly have experience. They also did the work on stage. There's a great song that's for the movie called, um, what is it called? Uh, the Anonymous Ones by Amandel Stenberger, which is also a beautiful anthem about being lost and alone and needing someone to hold on to. Um, I love this film. I cried it throughout the movie. I cried in the car afterwards. I love this film. I'm going to give Dear Evan Hansen four and a half out of five stars, and we're going to close the book on it. That's right. Come at me. I really don't care. I know that some of you will support me. There's some people... The theater I saw with was clapped. Like, people love this movie. So, I have to point out one thing, though. People are comparing this movie to Collateral Beauty. I hate that comparison. I'll tell you why. This movie acknowledges what Evan Hansen did wrong... Collateral Beauty had characters, every character in that was rotten to the core and was doing rotten to the core things with the exception of maybe Will Smith, but even he was doing something kind of rotten to the core. And they not only may wanted you to care about them, but they never, they never learned anything or grew from the experience. They just were awful people who got everything they wanted. That's not Dear Evan Hans. I'm sorry. I'm not going, I don't, I don't buy that. See the actual movie, and also the movie is way more unbelievable. Clever is way more unbelievable as a movie than this is. All right. So, um, yeah, um, not everything works in it. I'm going to, I have to acknowledge that too, but it's, it's really good. Uh, four and a half out of five stars. Let's move on because we got trailer trash to do. Okay, trailer trash. Um, there is some this time. I saw it in Dolby, so we got some tra Uh, in Kanto, we've talked about this for the new Disney film. Uh, it looks really good. Um, I have high hopes for it. I hope they do a good job. Listen, they've already had one great movie this year, so let's get two of them. Come on, Disney, we're counting on you. Uh, Journal for Jordan, already talked about it a few times, looking forward to it. Um, I love Michael B. Jordan. Um, I have a feeling from just this trailer, I don't know for sure, that he's not going to live in this movie very long as a living character, but I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, oh, this one is really exciting for me personally. Um, American Underdog. Uh, this is the movie about Kurt Warner. Um, for people who don't know, who haven't seen enough of my videos to kind of know the occasional times I drop it... Um, I was born in Webster Groves, Missouri, which is within St. Louis, um, and I grew up in a town in Illinois that is literally right over the river. I live about 30 minutes, really, most ways to St. Louis, so I spent all, I went to school there, I, um, when I go to a doctor, it's there, um, I practically live there, a family lives there, so I was a fan, um, Kurt Warner is a very important person to me in my life growing up, he was kind of someone I idolized, even though I'm not a big football lover, because he kind of was the hometown here. I'm really looking forward to this, because not only is it his story, but Zachary Levi, I love. Looking forward to this one. Um, it's coming out on Christmas, can't wait to see it. Um, Ron's Gone Wrong, this is a new trailer, still looks really cute. Uh, the guy next to me, kind of bonded with, said, hey, it looks kind of like Baymax. I'm like, oh my god, you're right, it does kind of look like Baymax. <laughs> um, King Richard, i um, heard a lot of good things about it. The Will Smith movie that actually will work, it's about the father of Venus and Serena Williams. It's kind of about how they got their start, that looks really good. Um, this is one that... I actually thought already came out, and I just missed it. Uh, apparently, it still has not. Uh, the 355. This is an action thriller with Jessica Chastain, among others. Looks really great. Uh, looks like a lot of fun. A really good cover of Run This Town by Rihanna. That's kind of done action movie style. And finally, Sing 2. Uh, don't care for their slight against uh, Miss Billie Eilish. Otherwise, uh, I actually like the first thing. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it looks really kind of touching. Um, all right. And Wizard Sharma. No, there was not, but there was... Uh, not a performance, but the song. Um, there was a really good new um, end credits version of You Will Be Found that's also really good. Um, okay. Um, we will be back. I gotta go because I'm almost out of time. Uh, we will be back at the at the very latest Thursday uh, for Venom. Venom! Let There Be Carnage. Um, Friday is The Many Saints of New York. Saturday, maybe, is The Addams Family 2. Um, as well as uh, don't The Jesus Music, or as I call it, Don't F With The Jesus Music. Um, based on Big, Le Big Lewinsky, Lebowski. Um, and then, um, lastly, I wanted to say, uh, happy birthday, Will. I love you, brother. Um, happy, 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 happy birthday. Today is your birthday. It's almost over, but I just wanted to get it in there. Uh, it's my brother, my younger brother. Um, all right. Um, and, uh, uh, that'll all be next time. Until next time, I'm Grand the Movie TV guy. I see it all. I'm happy to share with you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Class Smith. I love you a thousand. Um, you are loved. Uh, don't give up and go see Dear Evan Hansen and um, um, you're not alone and uh, and if you want to find lists, reviews and other stuff uh, you can find me on letterbox.com at Grand the Movie and TV Guy see you next time thank you all T see you later bye